Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good night. Whatever time this message reaches you, know that you are loved. Loved, loved, loved by God. And you know, uh, Facebook fam, YouTube fam, LOR Radio fam, Bishop, Reverend Lee, Reverend Love, Carl, Pastor Blake, all, all, all my little, my, my kitties, Chrissy, all of my children. Let me tell you something. Facebook fam, everybody. God loves each and every one of you. He loves all of us too much for us to remain the way we are. If our walk isn't right, we've got to get it together. And only he can help us. You know, Bishop, let me tell you something. Change won't come until we surrender. I mean, in our lives, change will happen around us. The thing is, a lot of times we protest to change. This isn't even part of the message, but it is now. Listen, a lot of times we we try, you know, a lot of us, oh, we don't want change, right? A lot of people, oh, I, I, I like how it was in the past. I like this government or I like when things were this way or when things were that way. The point is, as children of God, we have to embrace change. Change is a part of our daily growth. Nothing stays the same. A seed planted in the ground, if it does not grow, we will not have a tree that bears fruit. Huh? Okay. So change has to occur. So let's embrace change. The thing is, instead of fighting the change, let's yield to Jesus. How's that? Because in Christ, it's all good. All right. And I also want to share this, not part of the message, but again, it is. Because the Holy Spirit would have me say this. I shared this with uh, my Sabbath uh, Zoom family, and I'm sharing it with you. Bishop, can I tell you, for the past, uh, I think, two, three weeks, but especially in, in last week and on Sabbath, the Holy Spirit just kept, he's like, you've got to say it, you've got to say it, you've got to say it. So I'm saying it here too. If you have had a tattoo in the past, you're inked up. Let me tell you something. If you're a child of God, get some anointing oil. Meaning, just get the oil. Ask the Lord to bless it. Because no, none of us can bless anything. And put it on those inks. Uh, and ask the Holy Spirit of the living God to remove what's attached to it. Bishop, here's what the Lord said. He said that the, the 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 souls of the tattoo heart artists are dark the ink is dark if you have not gotten any don't if you have don't get any more especially as children of god here's the other part that he said hmm thank you holy spirit for reminding me listen what Whatever you tattoo on your body, you're going to become the host for it. There's some dark times coming, Bishop. It's not pretty. The darkness that's attached to that is very great. And only the light of Jesus can help. So that being said, I just want to say, the Lord always forewarns us because he wants us to be safe and he wants us to be saved he's saving us from evil from the traps of the enemy the bible says put on the whole armor of god and stand he didn't say fight he said stand he'll fight your battles so listen um when things are happening the intelligence agency of america right they have those who have their ears to the ground that listen to the chatter and what do they do they inform, don't they? they? They tell you police officers have informants. I didn't even know it was a thing, but it is. And what does that do? It makes you privy. It gives you a heads up. 
It said, listen, this is going to happen. That's going to happen. Be alert, be aware. So to be forewarned, my grandmother always say, is to be forearmed. Uh, when you know, you know what to do. So there it is. So God wants what's best for us. His plans are to prosper us and not to harm us. So let us pay attention. All right. All right, and now I've been released to bring the message for today in addition to what the Lord wanted us to hear this morning. To God be the glory. So this morning's message is entitled, What? Hemmed in on every side by his banner. Glory to God. Mm. Let me tell you something. If ever we need to be hemmed in on every side under the banner of Jesus, it's now. Can we agree with that? Sinners need him. Saints need him. Listen, we all need him. Every single soul on this planet needs him. We do. All right? Now, there's a scripture for me that has always meant a lot. Ever since the Holy Spirit, I, you know, he brought it to me. It's always meant a lot. Now, my grandmother used to do needlework. My my great grand aunt did needlework. I, I've talked about her. Like at 109, she was still doing needlework. 110, she was still doing needlework. I'm telling you, she did some beautiful needlework. Um, I'm so sorry that I left um, one of my pillows and uh, I no longer have possession of that, but uh, that she had given to me. But I tell you, she did some beautiful pieces. So anyway, this particular scripture, um, well, when I read it, you'll see. You see, when you understand what it means, what hemming means, this scripture will mean a lot to you. Because to be hemmed in, for me, means that I am secure, means I won't unravel, means my foundation is firm, right? It means the same thing for you. But I'm just saying, when I read it, this is how it comes, right? You see, when you hem the raw edges of, an, of, a, of a garment, right? No one sees the raw edges. They see the finished product. They see the finished results. You see, to hem in the raw edges, it's not just aesthetically beautiful, right? It doesn't just beautify the outfit. It is also for the sustainability of the garment. You see, tailors and seamstresses will understand that point very well. See, if you sew it all, you know what I'm talking about, right? You see, a lot of us may appreciate the garment for the style and the cut and the beauty of it and how it makes us look and feel, right? But the hem portion of the garment, see, the parts we don't see, the parts that, that, that are see there are two different materials here the way it's joined together that gives it lasting durability hallelujah and glory to god i don't know about you but i'm rejoicing amen i don't know about you but my spirit is happy glory to god last week tuesday my spirit wasn't so happy last week wednesday my spirit that took that day to grieve, to mourn, to just be in a space to say, hey God, uh, Bible, Bible says we ought not to let grief overwhelm us. So, you know, but to God be the glory. Listen, so I'm going to read the scripture to you. And there's an amazing blessing in this uh, for the hearing, for the reading and for the application. Amen. Glory to God. Listen. It's Psalm 139, 5 and 6. And I know a lot of you know it quite well. It says, Thou hast beset me behind and before. Thou hast beset me behind and before. Okay. The English standard says, You hem me. Let me tell you something. When I read that, like a lot of you who know me, you've heard me pray this for years at my church everywhere. Since I found the scripture, listen, I've been praying this way. You hem me in behind and before. That's what the English Standard Version says. 
continue reading the word of God, and laid thine hand upon me. Mm. Oh, hallelujah. Hey, Jesus. Your daddy ever just... Uh, listen, when a loved one put their hands on you, how you feel? Human touch is amazing. Sometimes even when someone just touches you, and some people don't like to be touched, understandably, that's understandable. People have been through a lot. Uh, 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 there, there are certain, uh, uh, like, uh, what's that? That's on the spectrum. You know, you have to, you, you have to, you know, we have to know folks. But um, autism, right? And, 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 and there are folks who just, or folks who've been abused, sometimes they don't like to be touched because if they've been physically abused, if they've been sexually abused, and you come in their sphere or their space, it's a trigger. All right. So if you if if you're reaching out to touch someone and you see them shrink back, don't pursue. Stand your ground and pray. You know we we've got to listen. The Holy Spirit always shows us clue. We cannot live clueless. We've got to hear the voice of God at all times. He tells us how to deal with folks. You'll know when someone needs a hug. You'll know when they don't. You just got to pray silently for them. Sometimes they need your words. Your kind words, that is. The words from God. The words that heal. Hallelujah. Wasn't part of the message, but it is now. Amen. And so, he has laid his hand upon me. Such knowledge. Oh, the psalmist said, it's too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Woo, hallelujah, glory to God. That, aren't you just, like, aren't you bubbling over? Is it just me? You know, bubble. Oh. My heart is full and bubbling over with joy. Joy to know that no matter what we go through, God is there for us to take us through. Let me tell you something. When God brought me to that Chesapeake Bay Bridge and took me over it, oh, you don't know, he was setting me up. I didn't know what was to come, but that was a setup, sons and daughters of God. He said, baby, I'll bring you through this. And look at how it looks on the other side. I tell you, it was so peaceful and beautiful. I know. I know. So in case you may have noticed, I wore a black and white shirt for communion last week. And this week I have on a black shirt. Um, you know, I just lost my mother's sister. I was taking care of her, my aunt. And so... You know, that's the reason. But you see, the Lord, when he took me over that bridge, he said, baby, it doesn't matter what it is that happens. I'm here with you. I've got you. I've got you. When I tell you, Tuesday was, and Wednesday was heavy. But I, after I spent the time with my daddy on Wednesday, I really did. I just like, I, I didn't do anything. Just... just but just, just lay there with my daddy, talk to my daddy, read the word, and, and let him minister to me. I had to listen to him. You hear me clearly. I had to hear God, okay? Thursday, praise Jesus. I woke up. It's a brand new day. Hallelujah. And so he has restored my joy and my peace. Amen. Glory to God. We've got to trust God. So anyway, the first time I read this scripture... I saw God ahead of me making the crooked path straight. Yes, because I read that in the Bible. I saw him behind me walking and protecting me from surprise attacks. That, that I was, you don't know, I was just rejoicing. I was just like, hallelujah. Every time I read the scripture, though, every time I could read it every day and still get something else out of it. This is how I tell you the word of God is alive. Bible says the word of God is alive. It's spirit and it's alive. Woo, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, last year, the Lord gave me this scripture to give to a friend, but he had me read a different version. Here's the version I read to the friend. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the divine revelation that I received from it, he says, it says, I read the Passion Translation. So it's, it's a Psalm 139, verse 5. You've gone into my future to prepare the way. Yes, Lord. Come on. Prepare on, Jesus. Yes. Uh-huh. And in kindness. In what? 
in kindness. You follow behind me to spare me from the harm of my past. Yeshua Amashiach. Oh, glory. Yes, you have laid your hand upon me. You want Jesus to lay his hand upon you. Some people, you might not want them to lay their hands on you. Some people, when they lay their hands on you, it's abusive. Some people, when they lay their hands upon you, it's oppressive. But when the Lord lays his hands upon you, oh, it's liberating. It sets you free. It's healing. It's joyful. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It makes you thrive. Hey, Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hey, Jesus. Woo. Hallelujah. <laughs> I can't contain myself. I don't know. <laughs> Praise God. But Reverend Lee, girl, listen. You know. The next mark. You know. Jesus. Let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. Crystal. Baby. Eja Mija. Hey. Hallelujah. Listen. Bishop. Apostle. Elisa. Paulette. All you guys. Carl. Pastor Blake, Pastor Thornton, let me tell you something. The children of God, the enemy really, like he hates humanity. And you see what he's doing to everybody. But can I tell you how much he really hates us? But Jesus, we can't be distracted. We cannot afford to be distracted. But come on, there's hope, there's hope, there's hope. Walk with me this morning. Walk with me this morning. Sit with me for a little while, okay? You're driving, just listen. When you finish, go over this, the parts you need. You can even fast forward to the parts you need. But I'll tell you what, this is a message that, listen, it's a message to sit in. All right, so come with me. Oh, yes. So, Yes, God has gone before us in our future. He is there. He is in our future. His plans are to prosper us. That's a future. Amen. He is also behind us, protecting us from the pain, from the shame of our past traumas and our past hurts. Hallelujah. Are you saying hallelujah yet? Come on. Come on, sons and daughters of God, so that we can do what? Reign in this earth. Because a lot of us are not reigning. Let's be real. I don't know about you, but I, I, we have to be real. If you cannot be real with God, see, if you're not real, if you're not transparent, if you're not accountable, truth cannot manifest itself in your life. Because where lies are, deception is is darkness lurks darkness covers and and darkness hides things depression uh, they hide things they hide truth but when the light shines baby come on now when light shines when light shines when light shines a lot of us as children of god are not reigning a lot of us as children of god let's face it the world the sinners don't want our god because they're like wait what are he doing for you how's that I don't see him. I don't see him. I don't see him in you. I don't see him around you. So when we see that, our lives need to change. The Bible tells us that signs, miracles, and wonders ought to follow us. We have to live our lives in such a way that people see not us, but Jesus. They're like, wait, what do you have? Who is that? Am I speaking to anyone this morning? Well, the Lord is bringing a whole lot of messages that wasn't even part of this, but it is now. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You see, there is pain, there is shame, and there is trauma in some of our past. And isn't it wonderful to know that God is behind you? He's behind you. He's behind me to shield us from all that was. You may squirm and you may cringe when you remember, but I promise you that your past can no longer hurt you can no longer hurt you. With God between you and your past, it can't. Listen, nothing can get to you when you're in God. How is, what's going to bypass God and get to you? What's going to bypass Jesus? When you're in Christ, what's going to bypass Jesus and get to you? What? 
Come on, it's time we start believing God. We believe every other foolishness we hear. We believe the things of the world. We b believe the they. And we refuse to believe God. But it's wake up time. It's wake up time. It's time for that intimate one on one relationship. We can't afford, I can't live through anybody else. I've got to live in Christ. We can share with each other. We can pray, and we ought to, for each other. But there must be that intimate one-on-one. -on -one. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The new... So here's... No, this is a version that, that, that... Come on. The New American Standard Bible says, You have encircled me. Behind and in front. But baby, can I tell you what the Lord showed? You know what a circle, like, it's like you're in a, you're in a, a sphere. Whoo. Oh, so come with me. Come with me. It's already 823. It's a lot. So just bear with me. Oh, Lord. Praise the Lord. Mm. Let me tell you something. Let's see how, when God encircles us, how we can live blessed and we can reign in this earth. Now I'm going to read to you Revelation 6, 1 through 8 in the Passion Translation. Now I know a lot of folks don't like to go to Revelation, but we need to go to the book of Revelation. Like I said, we, we, we try to run from things, but it doesn't mean, no, stand in Christ. The Bible said, put on the armor of God and stand. You see, there's the helmet of salvation that will keep your mind and keep your heart. Oh, so you don't have to panic. You don't have to run. You just stand. He says, stand against the wiles of the enemy. Just stand. He said, hold your peace. I'll fight your battle. I don't know. I'm hoping that these scriptures, let's reinforce them. Repetition is for intensification. The Bible says, faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. Doubt comes the same way because when you hear the devil's language, when you speak his language, all, all you're going to have in your heart and in your mind and in your soul is, is doubt. So let's repeat God's words. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So the word of God reads, Then I watched the lamb broke out open the first of seven seals. Immediately I heard one of the four living creatures call out with a powerful voice of revelation sounding like thunder saying, Come forth! Mm, I don't know, but I think that's been spoken. But let, let's go. And even if it's not, because the Bible said when we see these things, look up because it's the beginning. So here goes. So I looked, and this is John, the revelator. Remember John, the disciple whom Jesus loved? Girl, boy. <laughs> okay, man and woman, because I don't want you to become offended and not hear the word of God. But let me tell you something. I like when, when Jesus looks at me and says, daughter, yes, girl. You know, <laughs> anyway. All right, let me read the word of God. Yes, Jesus, I'm going to keep that private. So I looked and behold, there was a bright white horse. Its rider had a bow and was given a crown of victory. He rode out as a conqueror ready to conquer. Now there are different versions. So there are versions that says, listen, he rode out with the intent to conquer. He rode out trying to conquer. We're going to come to the revelation. All right. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature call out, Come forth! And there appeared another horse, red like fiery flames, and its rider was given a great sword and the power to take peace from the earth, causing one to put to death another. Are we seeing this yet? Okay. Then he broke open the third seal, and I heard the third living creature call out, Come forth! And behold, I saw the black horse right in front of me, and its rider was holding measuring scales. Now, there are two revelations here. So if I don't talk about the justice system this time, know that God has that message for another time. Yeah, okay. And I heard... What seemed to be a voice from among the living creatures saying, A measure of wheat 
for a day's pay and three measures of barley for a day's pay. But don't harm the olive trees producing oil and the vines producing wine. That's also a message for another time. But if the Holy Spirit reveals to you something, write it down and run with it. Whatever the Holy Spirit reveals to you. Because everybody is going to get something different. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise your name. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the fourth living creature call out, come forth. And behold, I saw a green horse, or the King James Version said the pale horse. Uh, in the Hebrew, it says green. Uh, okay, so, and, and its rider name, its rider's name was Death. And Death's domain followed him. They were given authority over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, famine, death, and by the wild beasts. We can see why a lot of people don't like to read Revelation, but there is hope. See, we don't like to read Revelation when we do not have the divine revelation of God. I didn't like to read Revelation. I used to, oh, that's a book, it's for the end time, and I'm not going there. But the Holy Spirit have taken me there time and time again. And tell, let, can I tell you the blessings I've received? I've been liberated, set free, and keep growing, okay? Hallelujah, glory to God. Now, so, first horse is the white horse. He exposes us to false teaching. Can I say there are false teaching everywhere? In Matthew 24, 4 through 5, Jesus answered, At that time, deception will run, run rampant. Do we see deception upon the earth now? It's everywhere. It's in the commercials. It's in the church. Let's just start there. It's in the church. So, beware that you are not fooled. For many will appear on the scene claiming my authority. Whose authority? Jesus' authority. Saying about themselves, I am the anointed one and they will lead many astray. Listen, can I say that we see this? There are many servants. Well, I can't say they're servants of God, but there are many pastors, bishops, popes, rabbis, apostles, deacons, ministers, you name it, whatever the title, that will say, Lord, Lord. But what are their motives? What's in their heart? The Bible says, do not be deceived. You know, one of the greatest deceptions, um, today there are many Jews who say they don't believe in Jesus, uh, can't talk to them about Jesus. Matter of fact, there are many Jews that don't believe in God even. There are many Jews who are very religious. Can I tell you something? First Christians were Jews. Why are we separating ourselves? A lot of the principles that are in the word of God and that the Jews follow, a lot of Christians say, oh no, that's, that's for the Jews. Go read the Bible again. Look at what Jesus observed. Look at what Jesus said false doctrines. Can I tell you something? And I'm going to show you a picture. Even while they were in the desert, as Moses led them, their salvation was in the cross. So how can they deny Jesus? Same way, a lot of us as Gentiles, we're denying Christ. But I tell you what, our salvation is in him. Jesus going to the cross. Okay, so that's all I'm going to say about the, the deception and the false teachings. But I'm sure you've heard false teachings. Just pick up, open the word of God for yourself, sons and daughters of God. And you'll know. You'll know if I'm telling you truth or a lie. Okay? That's how you're going to, that's the only way you're going to know. How's that? I, I, oh, I shouldn't say that's the only way because the Holy Spirit will reveal it to you. You know, I remember as I used to sit in, in different churches as I was growing up. And I would hear pastors preach things. The Holy Spirit would say, nope, nope. I'm telling you, I didn't know the word, but it's spirit. And later on, when I read the word, I said, you are right, Lord. So come on, open up your Bible and know that. Employ the Holy Spirit. Bible says he gives them to us. Hallelujah, glory to God. Now we're talking about the red horse. The red horse exposes us to wars and strife. Bible, to, it says it. What does it say? What did it say? Uh, he will take peace. 
Where there is no peace, there is strife. Uh -huh. We better have peace in ourselves. Peace in our homes. Because baby, in the world there is a lot of strife. Oh, When you take peace, peace will be with you wherever you go. I tell you that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, Matthew 24 and 6 says, You will hear of wars and, revelation and revolutions on every side with more rumors of wars to come. Don't panic, though. I told you there's always hope. Come on, now. Don't be afraid to read the word. Listen, I used to, I used to not like to read the, the, the genealogy. I, I used to not. Revelation, forget Revelation in Matthew 24. Mm. Or any scripture that says, whoa, Lamentations, Leviticus. But baby, I love the word of God. Oh, every page in my Bible is, is, is loose. It's not shut tight together because man the blessing the, and you know what i have to say this some of the greatest divine revelation and liberation is in those sections let me tell you mm, read it for yourself hallelujah glory i cannot make these things up i can't lie i cannot i refuse to lie on jesus listen the lord knows mm -mm. no 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 amen so it says don't panic or give in to your fears. Come on. For the breaking apart of the world system is destined to happen. It is going to happen. But he's saying, baby, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. It will happen. But I got a system for you. Listen, you better learn to live by heaven's dictates and not earth's. Because, baby, that's what override everything. Mm-hmm. Yes, it does. Yes, it, it, whew, it does. But it won't yet be the end. You see, I told you, it will still be unfolding. There's an unfolding happening, sons and daughters of God. Look at what's happening in the Ukraine right now. There, is, Listen, there is conflict between the U.S. and China. Did you know that? There is heavy violence in Sudan, in Haiti, in Colombia, in Lebanon, and other countries. Now, if you're not from these countries or, familiar, or, or, or affiliated with anyone from some of these countries, you won't know. See, a lot of times we live our lives thinking everything is unkidori, and we don't see the sin and the death crouching at the door, but Jesus. He, has, he is the only one who can rebuke it, push it away. Hmm. Anyway, let's look a little closer. On January 6, 2021, there was an insurrection on the Capitol, the highest office of the land. Hmm. There were and still are racial upheavals. Let's look even closer. Let's look even, get the magnifying, I wish I brought my magnifying, get your magnifying glass out. Because there is strife in many homes. There is strife in the church. There is strife within us as individuals. Listen, you got to say, baby, listen, you got to get up and say, listen, strife will not dwell in me, in my home, in my surroundings. You got to rebuke the spirit of strife. You know, anyway, I got to try to finish this. Let me not digress, Jesus. Oh, spirit of the living God. Thank you. Mm. Hey, hallelujah. Now, the black horse exposes us to lack in the economy. Also, to the injustice in the justice system. But okay, let's deal with the lack in the economy because that's where I'm going. At least, I should say that's the one the Holy Spirit had me focus on for this message. See, food is going to become costly. Let me ask you a question. Can you imagine paying $100 for a loaf of bread? No. Bread is, has gotten... But anyway, it's not there yet. It's not there yet. It's not there yet. It's not there yet. But who remembers? Did you know in California, like, gas for the vehicle was like almost $10? Um, in New York, in some places, it was over five dollars, right? Six dollars, seven dollars in some places. Uh, yes, it was. 
that's a, so those who don't drive say I don't care what about a gallon of oil for sixteen dollars a gallon of cooking oil uh, that's the regular vegetable oil canola oil I know a lot of people use canola oil but what is canola oil can someone please tell me what seed gives you canola oil okay but that being said that's for you to go figure it out that one is for nineteen dollars for a gallon okay sometimes we pay more for things that really is of can i tell you this though Ooh, thank you holy spirit for going there mm. holy spirit says sometimes we pay a lot for things that are worth a lot less just because they say it's good for you or they say it's valuable so um i was watching this uh a uh, 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 movie and they had poetic license and I, but I, I love that the holy spirit had brought it to me actually it wasn't my intention to watch it but the holy spirit just had me watch it and it was with the prodigal son there was a portion in there where the prodigal son had taken a mule from his father's land when he got to the city he said he wants a horse because a horse has more status but a mule does not and so he gave the horse the, the mule no he bought he, he left the horse the mule and bought a horse from this man who was selling horse horses so the man said to him hey you want this mule he said no no that reminds me of the farm and where i came from i don't want to have any to, any attachment to that no 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 so the man sold him the horse for an exorbitant amount of money do you know what the man said the man examined the mule he said wow this mule is worth more than my horses the boy didn't know the value of what he had anyway so i don't know like i said i'm gonna have to go back and watch this message because the holy spirit is just dropping a lot of golden gems in it i'm just like okay daddy okay holy spirit go on lead on and teach on yes so listen olive oil and now i'm talking about cheap olive oil or regular olive oil 38 dollars a gallon because can i tell you i saw olive oil a quart of olive oil for 50 now this was pure olive oil now if any of you know anything about me i like to get some some really good olive oil okay so yeah 52 dollars for a quart not a gallon but it was worth it it's worth it okay all right that's neither here nor there so kosher meat huh four strips of kosher meat about this size $58 did some of you remember me posting that there was um, eggs right the brown eggs for $9.99 for a dozen <laughs> we know last year I told you that 52% of America was undergoing a famine. Um, we think that things are, are bad or uh, did you know that China has bought a lot of our farmlands and our dairy? I'm just saying we had earlier this year there was no food for the babies on our shelves in the supermarkets and the pharmacies. Can I say, what did the Bible say? Famine, right? Okay. So now let's go to the final horse. The pale or the green horse exposes us to what? Disease and death. Matthew 24 and 7 nations will go to war against nation kingdoms against kingdoms and there will be terrible earthquakes horrible epidemics famine in place after place you know because of the the war in the ukraine 
the, there's going to show a famine on on the uh, the wheat, right? Anyway, let us keep trusting the Lord because the Lord will always provide. We know that he told Isaac to plant when there was famine, when the earth was, let me tell you, the Bible said he was blessed. God will always supernaturally provide for us. We've got to trust God. It's not to fear. He wants us to be aware and alert of what's happening around us so that we can say, yes, it is happening, but God. We don't go, oh, God will provide, but. No, no, no. This is happening. There's a famine. Things cost of living. The cost of the price of things are going up. Toilet paper, paper towel, everything. You know, you remember I told y'all, I said it. The Holy Spirit allowed me to see and to hear and share with you, right? So that we can be prepared. So we don't say, but we say, you know what, God, but you will provide. Can I tell you, even in the midst of all this, boy, I tell you, I've gotten some things for some prices you won't believe. Because I said, God, you will provide, and he does. Who, who, who am I going to be? Well, I don't know about you. You have to know who you're going to believe. But I believe God. When he says, this, this, and this is going to happen, I say, yes, daddy, but I thank you that you are still in this day with me. And he does. Can I tell you, I've gone places and gotten free stuff. I've walked into stores. Like, you probably won't believe it, but you have to be there with me. Thank God, He sometimes he provides a witness that my daughter's there. And others, to see me being blessed. That Jesus says, and he is your blesser too. Bishop was just sharing with me how God favored him and his wife. God is God. We have to believe him. And I know, because those of you on here that I know, you've all given testimonies of his goodness. Come on. I've heard your testimonies. To God be the glory. So, can we call COVID a horrible epidemic? Well, a pandemic. Huh? Was it horrible? Yes. 92 million people were affected in the U.S. And a million deaths. It's, I didn't make up the numbers because I can't make the numbers up. Uh, <clears throat> currently, they said 100, ooh, 160. 72 and I don't remember in the thousands though are still affected and I'm not even going to mention the number of people that I, I'm talking about this year we're we're just in August and the numbers are out there but it's not for us to panic it's for us to trust God I'm getting to that I'm getting to that so what about monkeypox? There isn't even an accurate count on monkeypox. The CDC, the World Health Organization, by the way, you know, I got some of these numbers from them. Listen, but on monkeypox, there is no, they, they like still, oh, we don't know. Uh, this, 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 okay? But what about something that people deal with that kills? Something called diabetes. Did you know that in 2021, 100,000 people died in the U.S., not talking about the rest of the world, from diabetes? By the way, just check in the country you're in, and then give thanks that you're not one of the statistics. How's that? Because to God be the glory, that he sustains us, that he keeps us. And even if you have diabetes, that God still keeps you. The word of God keeps you. Hallelujah, glory to God. I am telling you, Holy Spirit gave me this message a week ago. Okay? Yes. If there are current numbers, I don't know. So my numbers could be a week off. Okay? All right. Listen. What about this disease that eats away at people? The one called cancer. Well, in 2021, here's the statistic. 1,898,100 one hundred thousand one hundred and sixty thousand 
new cases. This is the U.S. only. Do you believe that we need God now? And if you belong to him, do you realize that we all, you need a closer walk with him? I don't know about you, but when I read these things, I'm like, Lord, you just got to give a praise. You just got to give God thanks. Thank you, Lord, for taking care of me. And even if there is something that ails you, or that it does not destroy you. We've got to learn to give praise and thanks to Almighty God. Because there are various other diseases. But God. He's amazing. And He's awesome. There is hope in Jesus, sons and daughters of God. Let me read this scripture to you. And this now we get into the meat of the matter. Don't pop out because here's the hope part. Here's the hope part. Well, there have been little drops here and there of hope. So Numbers 2 and 2 says, When the Israelites set up camp, each tribe will be assigned into its own area. The tribal divisions will camp beneath, beneath what? Their family banners on all forces. Of the what? Tabernacle. But at some distance from it. Well, I don't know about you, but when you read this today, aren't you glad that what? I am the temple of the living God. You're the temple of the living. Once you give your life to the Lord, and if you hear this message and you've not yet given your life to the Lord, or if you hear this message and you've backslidden, baby, run back to Jesus. His arms are open wide. All you need to do is say, Lord, if you don't know him, Lord, like the prodigal son, forgive me. He's like, baby, come on back. If you don't know him, say, Lord, I don't know you. I don't know who she's talking about. I've never heard about you. Or you may have heard, but you weren't paying attention. Say, I want to know you, Jesus. I really want to know. That's it. I just always say, be honest with him. Yeah, you could go to the Bible and quote it. You know, there's time for quoting the Bible. Can I say something? When you're in trouble, first thing you think of is the scripture. I think now you call on Jesus. That's it. He said, when you call, I will answer. If you're a pastor or a minister or a banker or whatever, your children call you by your title or they call you by your who you are to them. All right. That being said, let me remind you of the title. And then on every side, uh, by his banner. Okay. So let me show you a picture now. I want to show you a picture. Hope you can see it. Okay, there it is. Can you see that picture right there? That is the picture of how the children of Israel camped. What do you see? Look closely. It looks like a cross. Now do you see that the salvation of the Jews, the children of Israel, was in the cross? Nothing Sons and daughters of God. God is intentional. We are to be intent. The Bible said we must have confident expectation in him. God is not a fly-by-night God. He's not going anywhere. We have to stop living our lives as fly-by-night children of the living God. Giving ourselves into this and to that. Letting demons have their way with us. Every which way and that way. Being pr Prostituting ourselves to demons. And the demonic realm, stop it in the name of Jesus. And if you have an issue with what I just said, that just came out my mouth. So go take that up with Jesus, why don't you? Because he will make it clear. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Saying, Holy Spirit is in the... Oh, he's teaching today. This is a teaching moment, sons and daughters of God. All right. So a couple of things to know. I just showed you the picture. Now, I told you. Salvation for the Jews is in the cross. Salvation for the children of Israel was in the cross. Do you see how they were set up? But come on. You're saying, you're talking about the children of Israel. You're talking about people in the past. Or you're talking about the Jews. What does that, that have to do with me? Oh, come on. And if you are a Jew and you listen, this message come across here. And you don't know Jesus, it applies. So come on in. 
and hear. The Bible said hear. Hearing what? You know, you can't be saved if you don't hear. Okay? So hear and live. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, yes. Now, under the instruction of Christ, of God, under the instruction of God, the way the children of Israel placed their tents, it ended up in the formation of a cross. As sons of daughters of God, this is before Jesus went to the cross of Calvary, was it not? Yes, it was. The Bible tells us, Colossians 1 and 17, for all things are what held together by, by Jesus. Did you know that the protein that holds our bodies together, that the protein that doesn't cause our bodies to break down, when there's a breakdown in this, in this protein, your body is dying, right? The protein that holds our bodies together is in the shape of a cross. Ask your medical doctor. Okay. I'm no doctor, so go ask the professional. I would say ask Jesus first, but a lot of you guys love proof. So go get the physical proof. There's nothing wrong with, listen, Jesus say you can come and talk to him. We, we don't want to do that. So Google it, ask your doctor or those who are in the medical field. But I tell you what, go to God first. Okay, all right. Now, here's an interesting thing. Every tribe, hear me and hear me clearly, faced the tabernacle of God. Now, I find that curious. But when you know God, and when you realize the scripture, that God says, I hem you in on every side, I encircle you, you realize why they faced the tabernacle. They never worried about what was behind. Because I thought, wait a minute, God. How come some of them or the last, the last tribe didn't face that way? Like, because, you know, they were out in the desert. This, they, they're vulnerable. Here's another message. My God, listen, I'm trying to, I'm trying to end this message. Holy Spirit still bring you more. They were in a vulnerable position because they were in the valley. They were in the desert. They're on the open plain. Where are they going to run and hide? Nowhere. And they have their backs turned to where their enemies are coming from? You see, let me say this. Baby, daughter, daughters, sons, nieces, Friends, family, brothers and sisters, listen to me clearly. Husband, hmm? listen clearly. It's time we take our eyes off everything else and everyone else. Ministers of the gospel, stop watching what other ministers are doing and look to Jesus. Husbands, wives, stop looking at other people's marriages and look to Jesus. Parents, stop looking at other people's parents and look to Jesus. Children, stop looking at other parents and look to Jesus or other children. Stop looking at your co-workers and look to Jesus. Stop looking at your boss and look to Jesus. We're too distracted. Anyway, let me go on. Jesus. Holy Spirit of the living God. Mm. Mm. Help your people today. Thank you for this message. Thank you. Hallelujah. For teaching us how to reign in this life. So they faced the tabernacle. Their backs were turned, were their backs were turned on their enemies. Yet their enemies could not harm them. Read the Bible for yourself. Balaam tried to curse them ended up blessing them <laughs> you understand all right all right all right oh i'm just gonna keep it moving there's some of you who got it others will get it it will come because we all don't learn at the same time listen it took me years to learn certain things when some of you were ahead of the game but i'm still learning that's the thing though learning daily mm -hmm. amen praise the lord glory to god so 
You see, when we take our eyes off the world, our problems, our situations, our loved ones, sicknesses. You know, I heard a sister gave a testimony on this prayer line. She said she had her baby. Baby was sick. She left the baby at home with the fever and went to church. There have been people, I remember this pastor a few weeks, not a few weeks ago, but this year. He came to church. He preached the message. His loved one was sick at home. He said, listen, there's nothing I could do for the loved one. I think the loved one was in the hospital. He said, but I can sure bring the message for the word of God. But here's the update on that. Both of them, the, the, the lady's son was healed eventually, and, 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 and a pastor's loved one was healed. God said, you take care of my business, I take care of yours. We've got to stop focusing on everything else. Yes, be concerned, but listen to his instruction and do what he tells us to do. By the way, Bishop Anderson's been preaching about that, following the instruction of God. I'm telling you, you can never go wrong with that. Hallelujah, glory to God. So, when we take our eyes off everything else and focus on the Lord, he will care for us and resolve our problems. Because, listen to this, the eyes of God, Jesus, and God the Father, God the Son, God, are more than enough to guard us. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Holy Spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. So let me read this scripture to you. I'm wrapping up. I'm, ra I'm trying to wrap up. Holy Spirit, help me. So, yeah, we're in Revelation again. Revelation 4, 6 through 7. And the word of God says, And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes. Can you imagine this beast just have eyes, 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 eyes. As in the palms, as 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 behind, as in front. I don't know. I'm just seeing as all over. Okay. So, we're four bees full of eyes, before and behind. Beset before and be. Oh God, how you? Mm, my God. Y'all don't know. I, I'm getting, listen, when the Holy Spirit gave me this, I, I reread it. I reread it yesterday. And, and I just laid down in it. I did. I, I just had to have a moment. Who? There, there are more. There's more. There's more. So let me just carry on. And the first beast was like a lion. The second beast, like a calf. And the third beast, had a face as a man. And the fourth was like a flying eagle. Now when you read Numbers chapter 2, all of it, and Genesis 49, when you read Numbers 42, Numbers 2, you see the formation of the tribes. You're told that they were under a banner. When you read Genesis 49, you see what's on the banner. But there are some minor changes. But anyway, all that is a story for another, a message for another. Not a story, it is a truth, okay? Now, let me just share some, 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 some statistics or some information with additional information. Because I've been sharing the information with you all along. The tribe leader of Judah, by the way, Judah, what, Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun were in the east. And that was the largest tribe. Okay, so they were like, consider if you were considering the lengthiest part of the cross. That was them. And they were in the east. Okay. So, uh, uh, um, Judah, his men were 74,600. Issachar had 54,400. Zebulun had 57,400. You know what their banner is? The emblem, the lion. Once again, don't discard what I'm saying. Stay with me because, yeah, you say, lady, you're talking about what's in the past. Mm -mm, we're coming to the future. 
Stay with me. The tribe leader, Reuben, was placed in the south. That away. Okay? You may be saying, lady, that's not the south. According to the cross, it is. All right. So, Reuben had with him Simeon and Gad. So, Reuben's men were 46,500. Simeon's men, 59,300. Gad, 45,650. Their banner, man. Tribe leader Ephraim had Manasseh and Benjamin. Makes sense, right? Because those are Joseph's two sons and his brother. Just in case you're wondering. By the way, these are the children of Jacob whose name changed to Israel, right? And uh, Jacob had all the other names that I call were with Leah and, oh no, he had some with some concubines. All right, this, that's not the message for today. But, but Joseph and Benjamin were from Rebekah, the wife that died. All right, so let's continue. So <clears throat> did I tell you, so we had Reuben, Simeon, and Gad, or Manasseh. So Ephraim is a tribe leader of Manasseh and Benjamin. 40,500 were in Ephraim's men. Manasseh, 30, 32,200, and Benjamin, 35,400. They were in the opposite of the east is west. And their banner, the ox. Now tribe leader Dan was in the, we had, oh, oh we had the north, we had south. Okay. All right. So the banner is the eagle. Dad had 62,700 men, Asher 41,500 men, Naphtali had 53,400 men. Okay, so we know this. It's good to have some background information so we know its true relevance. Sometimes things aren't relevant to us because we don't know its history. Uh, a lot of uh, our children, our melanated children, don't value who they are because they don't know their history. They're born in today's day and age, and they, they were not told about the past. And so they don't value themselves because they don't know who they are and the contributions that our you know, people have made. But when you know the relevance of something and how it came to be, it matters more. Uh, anyway, to me, so maybe I hope to you too. All right. so. In the four Gospels, we see the emblem that is on each banner. And who they represent is Christ Jesus. Now, aren't you happy? Baby, the banner of Jesus is who we're aimed under. So you see that the same Jesus, even though he wasn't in flesh, that was protecting the children of Israel, out there but they were in a vulnerable position is the same Jesus who will protect you and I today when you're in your vulnerable position when you're going through the going through no matter what it is you're going through come on I don't know about you they relied upon God and Jesus covered them are you relying upon God and allowing Jesus to cover you all right so you're saying I don't get it come with me I'm, I'm, I'm going, it's after nine, but I'm still, you know, we're getting there. We're almost to the end. Now, Matthew's representation of Jesus is king. And so, the gospel of Matthew, we see Jesus being the lion. You see, Jesus' genealogy goes only to Abraham in Matthew. He says... This is the record of the ancestors of Jesus, the Messiah, a descendant of David and of Abraham. Matthew. Mark's representation is of the ox, the servant. We see Jesus, the servant, working to heal the sick, casting out demons. We see the words. Did you ever notice in the book of Mark, immediately straightway suddenly there's a lot of that 
and you can picture a servant moving right away. He's given a command and he does it right away. Let me tell you something. I'm rushing through this, <laughs> but there's a lot to unpack and a lot that will help us and will help you to, to reign in this life. Trust me. Just go over it and you'll see. Because oh, Holy Spirit, what he gives to one, he'll get. God is no... What, 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 listen, it's you, it's me. He's no respecter of man, right? He loves us. And because he loves us unconditionally, he's share. All you have to do is be willing to hear. So, um, the Bible tells us in Mark 1, 12 and 13, the Spirit, that is the Holy Spirit of God, then compelled Jesus to go into the wilderness where he was tempted by Satan for 40 days. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ooh, I'm sorry. He was out among the wild animals and the angels took care of him. Here we see Jesus being led to do a difficult task, much like you lead your ox to go do the work, right? And he overcame for the children of Israel and he overcame our temptations for us. Sons and daughters of God, you don't have to give in to temptations. Jesus did it for you. You just need to rely upon him. And then we see Jesus being taken care of by the angels. Just like you take care of your ox after it does a day's work. Don't think it be meaning. Glean the truth. And the overpowering, overcoming truth. And the divine revelation that empowers us in Christ. Okay? Luke's representation is man. He shows the humanity of Jesus. He mentions Jesus' cousins, John, in relation to Jesus. If you notice, started about John before he came to Jesus. He tells us how a human girl came to be the mother of Jesus. So I'll read Luke 1, 26 through 27 and verse 31. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, talking about John's mother, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. By the way, she was also a descendant of the King David. You will, in case some people have gotten to that point and been stumped, because Joseph was not the father of Christ. God is. So some people say, well, how was he related to David? Through Mary. And it's in the genealogy. Yeah, read it for yourselves, sons and daughters of God. But you know, remember that in, in, in the culture, they, they, they emulated the males more than the female. Not the God, God does not do that, though. Look how Jesus treat them. Treat us. How, I'm saying that. Treat us. Mm, hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. So... Continue reading. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. And that shows what? The human side of Christ. Now, John's representation, listen, there is more I could go into, but I'm really trying to end, you know, finish this up. John's representation, I'm telling you, it unpacks a lot. John's representation is the eagle, the deity of Christ. John 1, 1, 3 through 4 tells us, In the beginning was the Word. In, in the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. God created everything through Him, and nothing was created except through Him. The Word of God gave, him, gave life to everything that was created, and His life was brought to life. The ox, the eagle, man and the lion the four faces of jesus did you know and i didn't get into this i, I there is so much there's a teaching to be done on this i even have i had something i wanted to show you but in the tabernacle in the wilderness the four faces were on what separated the innermost from the holies of holy all right, that's the message for another day.
or, or you know. And please don't get at me if I say it's a message for another day. It will come. You know it will come when when the Lord says it's time. Come on. Okay. So you see, when we turn to the Gospels, it doesn't matter which direction trouble is coming from. It really doesn't. We just need to make sure we are under the banner of Christ. And hmm, that our focus is upon him. The children of Israel were vulnerable. The children of Israel had their enemies to their backs. Yet their enemies never defeated them because their focus was on Christ. When they got stung by the serp fiery serpents, the Bible said, God instructed Moses to put a, a bronze serpent and hold it up. And everyone that looked lived. It didn't say he put a salve. He said, everyone that looked, lived. Where is your focus today? The, the reason why so many things beset us is because our focus is in the wrong direction. We're looking at the wrong things when our focus needs to be on Christ. You see, we have to know also that we're hemmed in on every side by Jesus. We're covered north, south, east and west or you know north south east and whichever direction just look at your compass it i i know this is east for me that's west for me that's north for me no that's north and that's south for me currently right okay so listen we are covered on every side above and beneath as well you see the eyes of jesus we read it in revelation are more than the eyes of our enemies and no one's arms are long enough to box with god you know years ago i remember this boy wanted to fight my son but my first son but my sons are tall by the way so my he he grew like 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 i didn't I, one day i was putting on his vest at the time to go to church and he said mom can you fix in the in the back of the vest back in the day a lot of people don't wear, wear vest vests anymore so it had a little clip so i was you know adjusting it and i'm standing there and i'm looking this is where i said wait when did you get this tall anyway so this boy wanted to fight him at church no less and my son, no lie. <laughs> Let me, I broke it up. And I said that they should have reported it to an adult. It was really something foolish. And the, the young man apologized. My son stretched out his hand and held the boy's head like this. I saw the kid kept, they were the same age, they were around the same age. And he kept, punching and punching and punching and guess what the punches weren't landing holy spirit reminded me of that as i was writing this because the lord said weapons may form but they will not prosper and when your enemies punch at you because we're in christ those punches will never meet us the bible says put on the uh, the shield of faith god says he's a son and a shield for us i think it's in psalm something 11 or psalm 11 something all right jesus come on yeah yeah no, and i know some of you know the bible verbatim and can quote exactly where it comes from but i know that the word of god says that it says uh that um uh, and it's a good thing if you know it i love that anyway um it says that you know he's a son and a shield for us he says that we should put on his shield just wrap it around us the shield of jesus quenches the fiery dart that the enemy hurls or shoots at us i mean come on they cannot reach us the enemy will the and our enemies will tire themselves out they will confuse themselves and end up being defeated they will want to curse you and have to bless you hallelujah thank you jesus that daddy because of you jesus nobody can curse me and my family hallelujah glory to god you see god promises he promises no weapon formed against his children shall prosper and any tongue rises up against us we have the authority to condemn it 
Hallelujah. I condemn every ill spoken word over my life, over my children's life, over my husband's life in Jesus' name. Hallelujah and amen. No apologies. Bible says I ought to do so. How about you? Amen. You see, Jesus already knows what the enemy has planned for us and he has dismantled it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He has annihilated it. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Mm, my God. Sometimes when he allows things to happen, listen, he has to give that permission. If he allows it to happen, there's a lesson to be learned. Sometimes for some of us, we need pride to be annihilated out of our lives. We need anger. We need greed. We need worry. Huh? We, we, we just need certain things to be purged up. You know, if you're from the islands, you know about purging. Maybe from the south too, right? Children, you get a purging before you go to school, back to school. That was the thing. You got purged before you go back to school. <laughs> oh, Jesus, hallelujah. Glory to God. It kept us healthy though. Amen. So sometimes we need to purge from greed, from jealousy, from anger, from guilt, from lies, from deception. Ah, sometimes there's some things inside of us. When we're not learning the lesson, just there are more lessons to come till you get it. Mm, my God, glory, Jesus, you are amazing. So yes, almost near the end, really, really near. If, if, if we were doing a relay, this is the last leg. Mm -hmm. In times like these, we cannot afford to be anywhere else but under the banner of Jesus. Our focus, we must laser, be laser focused to Jesus. Everybody understand laser? Laser, do you realize the intensity of a laser? Lasers can cut powerful because all the energy, the light is not diffused. The energy is not diffused. Like our, oh, our, 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 our overhead light or our lamp lights or all the other light. No, laser lights, it's focused. It's focused. It's, it's all concentrated. It's, it's, you know, like when you have concentrated liquid and you need to, you know, it's too powerful to use that way. Our focus must be that. You know, let's just put the blinders on and see Jesus. See Jesus in the in the pages of the turn off the television, turn off the radio, turn off the husband, turn off the wife, turn off the children, turn turn off and spend time on the Lord. Then you come back together with the spouse. Then you come back together with the children you come back together with the whole family and each of them need to turn off everything too turn off the video games turn off everything focus on jesus you see how are you dressing hmm? how are you living how are you ministering god's word we have to dress in his word what do you think the armor is? Dressing in the word of God. I'm dressed in his word. You dressed in his word? Come on, we dressed. I don't know about you. I'm dressed in his word. Amen. <clears throat> then we have to live the word of God. We can't just wear the word. We got to wear it well. Mm -hmm. We wear it by living it. Not telling it to somebody. You think if I don't live the word, I could talk to my children or my husband? Because mm -mm. they would be like, what you talking about? You don't have the word. No, I can't afford that. Because I don't want to be a stumbling block. This lady read the scripture that I read years ago. Never to be a stumbling block in anyone's way. We are the written epistle sons and daughters of God. If they read us and don't see Jesus and we block them from Jesus and they die and they sin, their blood's on your shoulder. I said, Jesus, no. Mm -mm. 
please God. That was one of the time I pleaded with the Lord. I'm not going to lie. I was like, nope, don't want nobody's blood on my shoulder in the name of Jesus. Nobody's. That's why I always say, the Christian I am in my closet is who I am before Jesus. Because who my family don't see, who nobody else sees, is who I am. I can't just present myself to, to even the people in my house before I present myself to Christ. Come on now. Because he got to say, hey, Flo, you have, you're not right. Or, daughter, yes, you're right. Oh, you don't know. He, he, he purges things. Oh, my gosh. Have I been through some purging? And, and you know. He, he brings us straight. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Hallelujah. My family and I, we used to sit together and say, what do you see as our weak points? Nobody took offense to it. No matter what the other person said. Why? Because the Holy Spirit dealt with it. We used to, we didn't just, we, 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 we would write down the strong points. We would write down the weak points. And we would give it all to Jesus. We prayed for each other. Seriously. Even when they were younger. They would pray starting with the youngest one. To the oldest one, even before I got married, my mom and myself, and we just used to pray. And then when Mark started coming, you know, be part of our worship, that happened. You understand? That's how we did it. And that's how we do it. Because how are we supposed to grow if we keep living the same kind of life and not changing? We have weaknesses and we are allowing that our weaknesses to bring us down. No, give it to Jesus and let him turn it around into a strength or, 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 or abolish it, whichever way he chooses, but to God be the glory. Like I said, there's a lot of message in this. Oh, my Lord, Jesus, yes. So we have to know him for ourselves. We have to know Jesus for ourselves. We have to hear his voice and follow his instructions, right? Sometimes we get the instruction and we figure, oh, it's for somebody else. It's for my children. It's for my parents. It's for my spouse. It's for, it's for the people I'm ministering to. But it's not for me. No, baby. it, it got to be for us first. Let Jesus say, no, this one is not for you. But we need to just glean, bask in it, learn. Because that's all. We got to go through that daily cleansing, that purging. We shower every day, right? Sometimes twice a day in this weather. I don't know about you, but uh, twice. Why not read the word of God twice, three times? Get some cleansing. Amen. All right. All right. I said I'm finishing up. All right, Holy Spirit. Listen, a blind person cannot effectively lead another blind person. They will fall in the ditch. But a sighted person, they can lead you safely into what security yes a person was sick you wouldn't allow a person who's sick to to minister to you to take care of you right no because then they will infect you but a healthy person can take care of you and remain healthy and you get better true or false i'm just say, stating what some truths here uh, let me close with this there is a song that says, it's a whole, an old hymn. Under his wings I safely abide. I'm safely abiding. Though the night deepens and tempests are wild, still I can trust him. I know he will keep me. He has redeemed me and I am his child. This is such a beautiful hymn. I wasn't going to read you the second, but let me read you the next stanza. Hallelujah, glory to God. Under his wings, oh, what precious enjoyment. There will I hide till life's trials are o'er. Sometimes you want to curl up in your daddy's arms. Sheltered, protected, no evil can harm me. Resting in Jesus, I'm safe evermore. Under his wings, under his wings, who from his love can sever? What can sever us from the love of God? Nothing. Under his wings, my soul shall abide, safely abide forever. Encircled by God, the I am that I am. He is ahead of us. 
making our crooked path straight. He is behind us, protecting us from the pain and the shame and the traumas of our past, as well as any attack. Come on now, he's got our backs. Walking beside us. He's instructing us and encouraging us in our walk along life's journey. He's watching us from above, looking over us with love. And you know that his plans for us are to prosper us. He's beneath us, strengthening our standing and our walking. There are scriptures, sons and daughters of God. Go seek it out for yourself. The eyes of Jesus are multiple and they see everything, including what we cannot see. See, the eyes of Jesus even sees our heart's desire, our heart and our mind, the way we think. He knows the words we, before they're formed in our lips. His eyes see deep. My mother used to say she has deep eyes. She cries soon. I tell you, my mother didn't even realize that when she, maybe she realized, I didn't realize the connection to Jesus, the way his eyes can penetrate the darkest of night, the darkest of situations. He can penetrate my flesh and see my spirit. Huh? His eyes. Uh, this is why the song now means a lot more to me. My mother was one of my mother's favorite song. His eyes are on the sparrow and I know he's watching me. Oh yes, he watches over me and my family. Hallelujah. He watches over you and your family too. You see the, all we need to do is gaze upon him. When I look upon his wonderful face, hallelujah, the things of earth, the trials of earth should grow dim in comparison to the light of who Jesus is, the love that permeates, oh, hallelujah, under the banner of his love. Huh? I, you, we thrive because encircled by him is that barricade that nothing no demon from hell, the devil himself, nothing can cross and nothing can get through. And to that I say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Abba. Thank you, Holy Spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. Amen. Know that. I do love you guys. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit loves you so much more that I pray that this message makes a difference in your life. We need it now more than ever because the times we're living in, ah, oh, you think you see some things yet? Mm, there are things, not saying nothing now, but I'm just saying, be alert, be aware, trust God, focus on him because that's all we need to do. And he will keep us safe and he will save us. Thanks be to God in Jesus' name. I'm blessed and a wonderful day, everyone. This morning, it was raining showers of blessings. By the end of the message, the sun is shining brightly. The sun of righteousness is arisen with healing in his wings. For those who need healing from lupus, from COVID, from arthritis, from cancer, from heart disease, oh, hypertension and diabetes, whatever it is, sun of righteousness, all you have to do is reach out and claim it in Jesus' name. Remember to take the communion meal. He made it. It's the meal that heals. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen.